Good morning. We seem to have woken up into a bit of a winter wonderland this morning. It got down to about minus six last night. Not much warmer in the van either. Our double foil insulation in the front window is actually froze on the inside. All of our windows were frozen on the inside. It wasn't nice. But uh, we've got one more day in Serbia. Then tomorrow we're going to head into Kosovo. Even the mats in the front are completely frozen solid. <laughs> so our time is nearly up in Serbia. We're just about to head over to Kosovo now. But we've had an amazing two weeks here, just over two weeks. It's been absolutely incredible. The landscape is beautiful. It's so wild and untouched. The people that we've met are so friendly and helpful. It's such a shame that it seems that so many people just pass through Serbia or avoid it altogether, maybe simply because it's not a coastal country, but it's got such an interesting culture. I can't help but feel like it's at the very heart of the Balkans, you know. Everything's so interesting about it. And I think also maybe what puts a few people off is that it still has this kind of leftover image from the Balkan War, which is silly because that was like two decades ago, um, when in fact all the cities are really modern. The rural areas are really rural, but we love that, just getting completely disconnected way out in the wild. And I think, yeah, there's no reason not to visit. So we're just about to cross into Kosovo over an administrative border. It's not an official country border crossing because, as most people will be aware, Serbia doesn't recognise Kosovo as an independent state. So we don't really know all that much about Kosovo, apart from the fact that it's Europe's youngest country. It's just over 10 years old now. It's got the youngest average population. And it seems to be a real crossroads of cultures with a really distinct Ottoman influence, I would say. And um, it became its own country in 2008, was it? Yeah. And I think, yeah, we, we don't know much about it other, other than the obvious war and the struggle for independence. I think it's going to be really interesting to see the culture, the unique cuisine, everything about yeah. it. I'm really excited. So we're really looking forward to our time in Kosovo. I think it's going to be super exciting. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my God, that's really icy. That's great. I grit this bit. the one guy we just saw walking around see where we got to go because that's no entry and that one's been combed off and says no entry too so <laughs> I don't know so we made it into Kosovo fairly easily they didn't really search the van too thoroughly or anything not that we're hiding anything but most of them think we are so that was pretty easy um, we just had to buy border insurance for Kosovo because even though we've got a green card here they will not recognize it um, it's supposed to be 15 euros, but for our engine size, the 2.4 litre, it's actually 77 euros, which is worth mentioning. Um, we didn't have that on us because we only expected it to be 15 euros. So he just went like this and said 15 euros for coffee, 15 euros for insurance, no problem. So I gave him over the 30 euros and we were well on our way. <laughs> now we've just got to contend with these mad icy roads all the way down into Pristina, and then I think we're good to go. Crossing the border, the first place we've had to come is the capital city. No ideal really, but we just need to draw out some money somewhere, find a SIM card that works, get some food from a market, and then go and park up for the day. And hopefully we might even be able to go to the Bear Sanctuary. We've got our Kosovan SIM card sorted. We've withdrawn some euros because even though Kosovo does use the euro, it's not actually in the EEA. So we get charged every time we use our card. And now I think we're heading out of the city, thank God, and heading to the bear sanctuary. A bus! Uh, you're on the wrong side of the road. Okay, we're 
in the sanctuary. It's cost us one euro fifty each. Can't believe how cheap that is. <laughs> Let's go find some bears. Until 2012 in Kosovo, there was actually no law against holding bears, so people would capture them and then keep them in little tiny cages outside restaurants as some kind of attraction. So when the new law was passed and all the bears began to get rescued, they had to put them somewhere. So they created this sanctuary just on the outskirts of Pristina. And in 2013, the last restaurant bear was rescued and now they all live a very happy life in large enclosures here with all the little pools and everything else they need to be happy. I never imagined we'd get so close to an actual bear. These are the kind of cages the bears were kept in outside the restaurants. Just look how small this is compared to the size of one of these bears. It's totally inhumane. With some bears here being imprisoned their entire lives, and many for periods of over 10 years, surviving solely on junk food fed to them by spectators, they are now unable to be released back into the wild. The bears lived in small cages outside of restaurants, with no protection from the intense heat and brutal cold of the Balkan seasons, with passers-by taunting them day in, day out, and even throwing stones. As a result, many of these bears have sadly suffered irreversible damage to their mental health. For some bears here, the memories of their suffering is too much to let go of and they find themselves pacing a small section of their large enclosures because they are so used to only having a small space to roam. Four Paws are working hard to rehabilitate the bears, providing a safe and friendly environment for them, and working to re-stimulate their natural instincts through activities such as leaving trails of food for them to find. We left the bear sanctuary to park at a nearby lake for the night, where we were greeted by more furry friends. Good morning everyone. I would love to show you where we stayed last night, but it's just too cold to go out there. It's um, not going to go much above zero degrees today and there's a wind chill of minus six out there at the minute. It's just started to snow and this is the day that we were going to do a little whirlwind tour of Pristina. So it really is going to be a whirlwind tour because I don't want to be out there for too long. And I don't know how much we're going to be able to film in this wind either. So we're just going to see what goes on and see what we can do today. So they commemorated him with this enormous 11 foot high statue you can see behind me. Despite being a Muslim majority country, one of Kosovo's most iconic religious buildings is Roman Catholic. The cathedral was built in 2007 to commemorate St Mother Teresa, who is ethnically Albanian just like 95% of Kosovans, so she holds a special place in their hearts. Kosovo's National Library was just as ugly in design as we'd read about. Built in a brutalist style by the Yugoslavian government in 1984, the white domes and brown cubes are supposed to represent the Ottoman and Byzantine architecture that's prevalent across the region. Okay, so we've got a slight problem. Uh, my phone's just died and that had all the information about where we're going to show you. And it's also got the uh, map marker for where we parked the van. 
we haven't got a clue where we're parked in the city and it's just started snowing quite heavily and it's freezing. Seems to have made a little friend now. <laughs> He's going to guide us back to the van. <laughs> Don't know if I've mentioned how cold it is yet. It's cold. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> Got three of them now. Well, I'm really sorry, everyone. I think this is probably going to be the end of our tour today. We just really need to get back to the van now. It's so cold and it's snowing very heavily. And we've got to go up a mountain to back to our park up tonight. It's a little bit worried about that on the road. So see you later. It's been fun. Back at our park up where we stayed last night. Looks a little tiny bit different than when we woke up this morning. We brought the dogs back some biscuits and some sausage meat. Lucy found a rug in the city centre inside some bins. So we're just gonna set up a little base for them underneath the van and put the tarp over the front. So they got a bit of shelter from the cold tonight. They got loads of food to eat, so we've done the best we can for them. another cold one tonight it's gonna to be about minus seven so I think it's time to get that heating on and get into bed Hello. How have you guys been sleeping in there? Hey is it warm and cozy? Oh hello <laughs> The next day, we revisited Prishina to meet up with the Romani journalist, Denis Galushi, who gave us a tour of the national radio station, Radio Kosovo, and a brief history of Romani identity here in Kosovo, before introducing us to a local artist, Mojeta. Mojeta had created an exhibition on what she calls the modern Holocaust, comparing the persecution of minorities during World War II to their persecution today and highlighting the lesser known number of Romani people who were also executed during the war. We went on to meet the CEO of Roma Versitas, an organization who are funding and encouraging Romani youth to pursue further education. You can find out more about these inspiring people in our upcoming short documentary about life for minority ethnicities in Kosovo. Make sure you subscribe to be the first to watch. After a busy day in Pristina, we got a call from another journalist on the other side of the country and drove there that night to meet him. Is the maestro. Now he's gonna show us how to prepare, how he's preparing things. And then we pick up Okay. Before to start, he wants yes. he want to offer or I don't know how to call it, uh, coffee or tea. Oh, for you. Okay. That'd be lovely, okay. yeah. yeah. Coffee, but when we said coffee, we use Turkish coffee. That's, That's the best kind. Best coffee. <laughs> okay, yeah, Jimmy, I'll be good. Okay. Beautiful stuff. Okay. 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 Okay.
Falamendi. Uh, maybe there you can put. Ah, okay. Falamendi. Luan is one of the last remaining masters of the traditional Balkan Egyptian art of earthenware, a craft that was brought to the Balkans by the Egyptians when they migrated here thousands of years ago during the Iron Revolution. Egyptians were instructed by the pharaohs to travel to Europe in search of iron, and many of them ended up settling here, working manual jobs such as smithery and agriculture and maintaining their separate, distinctive cultural identity to this day. Today there are around 37,000 Balkan Egyptians, the majority of whom live in Kosovo. We watched as Luan masterfully crafted and shaped the clay, spinning it into shape in just a few minutes. He explained the process of compressing the clay inside a machine. and that the pots would then be glazed and baked in an oven at a thousand degrees. Once they were done, he would sell them in shops and markets. Incredible. He makes it look easy. Yeah, it looks really easy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then you go there. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to try, I think I'll make a mess. alaikum. <laughs> 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 We had been invited into the teke of some local Shia Muslim dervishes, prominent figures within the Balkan Egyptian community, of whom over 90% are Muslim. The teke was where they came to worship and meet with members of their community. <laughs> Actually, um, the Muslim sect are divided. Uh, on 12th, if I remember, on Don uh, For example, as I told you before, on, on, um, on the week of like, like a political party, you know, divided from different sect inside of, uh, of, of that. Yeah. For example, Kadri, Rufai, uh, Halveti, uh, and another different things. Because he made it in the name of God. Uh, the way how they uh, practice uh, religions, they are obligated, especially every Friday, to do kind of Muslim ceremony. Understand? But like a chant. Yeah, something like that. They use it during the ceremony, especially children or chef who is with the strong believing, just take her and uh, by feet he go there, by leg, and nothing happened. Okay. You can imagine no blood, nothing. Oh, wow. Because of uh, the, the way of trusting, you know, like, like it's very, no, it's very dark. <laughs> well, what can I say about today? It's been a crazy one, isn't it? So much to take in. We've had the best day. I feel truly privileged to have met all the people we've met today. Big shout out to the people that helped sort it out as well. They've been incredible. It's just been amazing. We're absolutely exhausted now. I personally have been up since 2am, 
because of the bloody dogs barking all night long. It's now coming up for, it's just turned 10 o'clock, so been up for like 20 hours, and it's been a busy 20 hours, non-stop. We thought we was only gonna be meeting the second uh, journalist this evening just to discuss what we'll be doing over the next coming days, but it turns out is just ma amazingly managed to sort everything out in one evening, you know, just fixed it all up for us. So he's such a cool guy, massive respect for that. It's been an incredible experience. So now we're driving a little bit further south to Prisven, where we're going to be doing some more filming tomorrow. And I think we just need to have a bit of rest and a bit of a lie-in. And if I can find a little pizzeria on the way back, I'm definitely going to get a bit of pizza because I'm starving. Anyway, I think we've had enough today, so I'll run out. Allah. <laughs> 